Hey guys, even here and you are looking at Big Ramy at 6 days out of Mr. Olympia. Unfortunately no, he's not gonna do the Mr. Olympia. Apparently he got a special invite, that's what George Farah told us and he did not accept it. Why he didn't accept it, who the hell knows, I have no idea because he is looking amazing. He is looking like a serious contender. I know the lineup is not super deep, but last year the top 3 that's gonna probably make 2019 Mr. Olympia beat Big Ramy. So Brandon, Rowley and William Bonac did beat him. He did manage to beat Dexter somehow. He was much bigger than him but much less conditioned, but still he was better than, than Dexter for sure. He was 6th place last year and this year with this kind of shape, I don't know, I mean he is not looking super shredded. He is not looking more shredded than he ever was. And that's what we need to see from Big Ram if he wants to win the Mr. Olympia. And I think he knows that very well. And many people are talking about muscle maturity. That's also a thing with Big Ram. It's not just conditioning. I don't know, really. I think he's training too long not to have muscle maturity. I think it's all about conditioning. His skin needs to get a little bit tighter. You know, a little bit drier. I mean, these guys today, they don't want to push the envelope too hard. I mean, you listen to Dorian Yates. And he would get super, super big in the offseason. But when it comes competition time, prep time, he would not care whether he's big or full or whatever. He would just try to get as peeled as possible. And that's why he would get very, very big. So when he gets super dry, he still looks big. And he was bigger than the other guys, so he could have afforded to lean down that much. And then he would go, as he says in his own words, uh, he would look like a middleweight bodybuilder. That's how shredded he would like to get. And that's what we need to see from Big Ramy. Size is not a problem. Look at this bag. Just look at all this mess. Look at the muscle hanging from his back. Look at the lower back. Lower back is so thick, so dense. It's insane. He is big. He is big as a house. And I think he improved even. I think he looks more detailed now. He gained muscle probably. He gained that maturity. And for six days out, I don't know, he's not super shredded. So he probably wouldn't win the Mr. Olympia. I think Rowley and Brandon are probably going to be ahead of him simply because of the conditioning. Probably even Bonac. But if Big Ramy somehow, someday, eventually, hopefully, gets peeled, peeled to the bone, brings that 90s conditioning, the conditioning that Harry Chopin had, for example, the conditioning that Brandon Curry had when he won the Arnold Classic, Phil Heath conditioning, Sean Roden 2018 conditioning. If he would get that dry, that shredded, it would be game over for all the rest. And that's not news, basically, everybody knows that. So what is the reason why Big Ram is never shredded, I don't know. But I think he's not dieting hard enough. I think he could diet harder. I heard stories from other bodybuilders that were dieting on egg whites and spinach. Pretty much for, for weeks before the competition, like four weeks out. Only that, zero carb. Imagine that. Imagine Big Ramy doing only that. I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he is doing that, but his body is just not responding. Probably not, though. I think he's not trying hard enough. But if he did, and uh, if he did whatever it takes to get super lean, he could win the Mr. Limp. I think so. This year... And this year was his chance. This year was his big chance, because Phil Heath is not there, Sean Roden not there, Flex Lou is still not competing, and so on, Kai Green also. It's a pretty weak lineup, weaker than the years before. Weaker than when Big Ramy took second place in 2017. So, it's his mistake, really. It's a mistake not competing this year, not coming shredded and winning the show. But it is what it is. Let's go with the next thing I want to talk about. Alright, so the next bodybuilder I want to talk about is Luke Sando. And as you can see right here, he's posing at 6 days out. Now, Luke Sando, I mean, I liked him a lot before, when he was a prospect. Now that he actually, you know, got into those top ranks, I need to criticize him a little bit more heavily than before. Now he's one of the top guys, that's true, I mean, he was third place at the Arnold Classic. So, right now, as one of the top guys, he's not as good as I thought he would be, because he is not consistent with his conditioning. At the Arnold Classic, that was his breakthrough. Third place at the Arnold Classic, that was just amazing. Amazing shape and everything was really, really good. Then later we had Indy Pro, we had Darren Classic Australia, and he disappointed us. He didn't come super sharp. Right now, at 6 days out, he looks pretty much the same as he looked 6 days out of Arnold Classic 2019. 
where he took an amazing third place, where he beat everybody except William Bonek and uh, Brandon Curry. He did even beat uh, Rolly Winkler and Cedric McMillan. Cedric was in his pretty much regular shape, but Rolly was way off. So I don't think he can beat Rolly at the Mr. Olympia, no. But he can beat Cedric if he comes sharp, again, as he was in 2019 Iron Classic. Is that going to happen? That's a huge if. At a Tampa Pro, he was pretty conditioned, he was pretty good, but not super good. But I don't feel like he tried too hard for Tampa Pro. Now this is Mr. Olympia we're talking about, and I'm sure he will give all that he has in his tank. Although this was a long year for him, he competed in many competitions, and he really did try super hard for Arnold, but later, at the Indy Pro in Australia, I don't know what he did, but he did something wrong, he was watery, he was way off. He was beaten by, for example, Steve Kuklo, who was 10th place last year. He was beaten by Hassan Mustafa, who is not even at the Mr. Olympia. It was his pro debut and he beat Steve Kuklo. Akim Williams as well. So, I mean, based on that, you know, if he comes super sharp, like he was at the Arnold, he can be very, very well. He can crack a top 5 or top 6 to Mr. Olympia. But I am not exactly expecting him to come that sharp. It's possible, since this is Mr. Olympia we're talking about, he's probably gonna try to push the envelope as hard as possible to come as good as he can be. But previous competitions showed us that he doesn't always come like that. And I don't know if he's trying hard or whatever, but, you know, just the track record speaks for itself. So, if I was a batting man, I wouldn't bat on him cracking the top 6. No, because I don't know if he's gonna be shredded enough. This pose, the expect double bicep, shows a lot of density and thickness, as he is super, super thick, but he is not uh, very symmetrical in this pose. This pose just looks completely off. I mean, the, the right side and left side, very, very bad. Not good symmetry, but other poses are also very, very good, and he is very, very big. And again, if he comes sharp, which is not likely, he's gonna crack a top 5, top 6, but if that doesn't happen, top 10. Top 10, yeah. What do you guys think? I mean, you cannot really think anything. It's all about him. It's all about what he's gonna do. So again, if he comes sharp, he's gonna crack the top 6. If not, top 10 or something like that. I mentioned Steve Kukul before, and this is his updated 6 days out or so. And I think this guy can surprise us. I think so. Because at this in the pro, he really looked good. He really looked good. I mean, he does not have that deep cuts, that deep separation, that muscle maturity... Uh, that is required for him to win the Mr. Olympia, but to place top 6, I think it's possible, because he has the symmetry, he has the lines, he has the thickness, uh, he's very, very big, he's very symmetrical, and he gets conditioned. Now, when he gets conditioned, he mainly gets vascular, and his skin does look tight, but you cannot really see the deep cuts, the separation, and I think that's just a muscle maturity thing. But is it, though, because he is not young, he's 34 years old, once he was young and he was the prospect, many people thought that he will surprise us and like be next Mr. Olympia, but that really didn't happen. Now, muscle maturity, what is muscle maturity? Honestly, I have no idea. They say it comes with uh, years of training, and I heard Dave Palombo saying that it is basically once your uh, muscle mass gets maxed out, when you cannot really grow any muscle uh, lengthwise, then your muscle fibers start I don't know, growing onto each other or something like that, and then you get thicker and denser, whatever. I don't know if you can understand what I'm saying, but it's something like that. And basically, I don't really see that happening from just training, training to maintain, but when you're actually trying to grow and you cannot grow, I mean, you can watch Ronnie Coleman training for his eighth Mr. Olympia title, and he wasn't training any easier. The same thing with Dorian. And these guys were always training super hard, they were always trying to grow. And that's why they were so matured and they looked so hard. But then again, you have guys like Phil Heath, who always look matured. So I don't know if this is a genetic thing, but probably genetics do have a big role when it comes to muscle maturity. And I'm sure training does as well. So if Steve Kuklo somehow gets matured um, before not too long, he can be one of the top guys. But as for now, if he just comes conditioned, very well conditioned, with this lineup, top 5, top 6 is actually possible for him. I think so. What do you guys think about him? Alright, and the last men's open bodybuilder that we're gonna talk about today is Sean Roden. Unfortunately, Sean is not gonna compete at the Mr. Olympia, 
but he will be at the expo. So he's coming at the Mr. Olympia, he's coming in Vegas, but he's just not competing. So if they just banned him like that and he didn't like what I did, he wouldn't really show up at the expo, right? So I'm sure he had some conversation with them and they agreed that uh, he is gonna skip this Mr. Olympia. I mean, this is just assuming it just makes sense, it's logical, but who the hell knows what is the story behind, but uh, Sean Earl, this is his most recent update and he looks good. He looks good and I think uh, they will let him compete next year once his problems are resolved. Again, I don't know that, but I think so. I think uh, it's, it's a long time. It's long enough for AMI to reconsider that decision and for Sean to actually maybe compete at another show to qualify. I mean, he's already qualified by winning the Mr. Olympia, but he's a bodybuilder. He's a competitive bodybuilder at his prime, at his very best right now. And that's how he makes a living. I mean, sponsors and everything, that's cool, that's great. But winning the competitions, it's also very good. I mean, it's a lot of money in that. So I'm sure he's going to compete next year or this year after the Mr. Olympia. Maybe he will do the The Rock show, maybe some other shows. Because he's not banned from the IBB, he's just banned from the Mr. Olympia. And he's at his prime. He's one of the top bodybuilders of today. Last year he was the one, the, the best one. And he can be the best one again. He is known for conditioning and uh, he has the mass, he did not lose any muscle. So I'm really looking forward to seeing Sean Norton competing again at any stage really. But I'm really hoping that they're going to see him next year at the Mr. Olympia against guys like Phil Heath, Big Ramy and uh, Flex Lewis. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. But let's see first what's happening in the 2018 Mr. Olympia. Maybe somebody else completely wins it. Imagine Steve Kuklo winning it or, I don't know, Luke Sando or Harry Chopin or something like that. I don't know, it's not very likely, but imagine something like that happening. We have no idea who's going to win it. Anybody can do it. Probably Brandon Aroli or William Bonek, but some of these guys most likely. But anything is possible once again. Anyways, let's go to the next thing. Let's do some classic physique talk. Let's talk about Chris Bumstead right here. So this is his most recent update and many times before, before the Mr. Olympia, I was looking at Chris, especially his lower body, and I was thinking, well, he needs to get a little bit drier in his lower body. But when the Mr. Olympia comes, he's ready. So he knows his thing. He knows how to get dry. And I'm sure conditioning is not going to be a problem this year. Without the kidney problems, the water retention is also not going to be present. So I'm sure Chris will be at his best. And is that going to be enough to beat Brian? Well, until this point, I was pretty sure that it's going to happen. I was pretty sure that Chris is going to win the Mr. Olympia. But right now, honestly, I don't know. I don't know, because Brian really didn't make a lot of progress for the past couple of years. And I was expecting him to come the same as he was last year. And I thought, if he comes the same, and if Chris comes improved because of the fact that he's not having kidney issues and therefore no water retention problems, Chris would win the Mr. Olympia. But man, Brian made some progress, actually. Let me show you this photo. Wow, wow, he really looks good. He really looks good. And he said it himself. He never tried as hard as he's trying this prep for the Mr. Olympia. I think that's exactly because he knows that last year he won only by one point, and that was because Chris was off. So this year Chris will not be off, hopefully, most likely, and that means that if Brion comes the same as he was last year and Chris comes a little bit better, he would win, as I said a million times before. But that's why Brion worked so hard, and right now he looks better than last year, I think. I think he looks thicker and harder. And I mean, look at those biceps. That's something that Chris cannot match. Now, if you take a look at his lats, they are not as wide as Chris's, nor are his proportions really. I mean, uh, leg length to torso length ratio. Chris has that much better. But as far as the muscle maturity, the density, the thickness, the, the conditioning and everything, the details, many, many details on Brion's body, he's better in that regard, basically. And one more thing, look at his back. Chris cannot match this back. He is not even close. Not even close. Brion has much, much better back, and I think this year it looks better than ever. It looks probably better than George Peterson's. It's in that ballpark, so it's gonna be an epic battle, that's for sure. And who's gonna end up victorious? Hell no, I have no idea. I have no idea at this point. I thought it's gonna be Chris, but seeing how much Brion improved and how good he's gonna be, I don't know, really. But I do know one thing, it's gonna be an amazing show. And I can't wait to watch it. I can't wait to see these two guys collide. 
And it's probably gonna make your top two, but who's gonna win it? Let's see, let's wait and see. But against this back, Chris really needs to bring something special if he wants to win. And we have a physique update of Keon Pearson, who is having an amazing set of legs, very good V taper and a great vacuum and great arms, but the mass in his chest is lacking. And I just don't think he's on the level of these top guys. The most impressive part of his physique, alongside with his arms, his crazy biceps, is his rib cage. He really has some really good ribs. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding, but yeah, his, his rib cage is really good and it makes a really good vacuum. But is this gonna be enough to crack the top three? No, 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 no. I don't think so. I think top six, like the best case scenario for Ken. I don't think he can beat anybody out of that top six. He was really good at the New York Pro, but uh, these guys at the Mr. Olympia are just another level. They are not at the top for no reason. When the time comes, I'm sure Keon will reach the top, but not this year. I don't think he's big enough, I don't think his chest is full enough, I don't think he's matured enough. It's gonna happen, I'm sure he's gonna be in the top, but probably not this year. Maybe I would be super surprised if it happened. Anything is possible, as I always say, but based on these photos and their previous performances, I think top 6 is a little bit too much for Keon this year. This year, next year, maybe. Also, I have to mention David Hoffman, the Hoff. This guy has so many fans, he's German and so probably all the Germans are cheering for him in classic physique. And I must say that he is improved. I think this year he looks better than the last year. He got fuller a little bit, don't you think? I think so. I think he got a little bit fuller and he is very, very conditioned. He has a tight skin, you know, he has that graininess. And for that reason, when you have graininess, we have details, and details are very important in classic. Size is not that important. What is most important is details, because those details are going to make you look more impressive when you have a weight cap. So, this guy right here, Hoffman, David Hoffman, he can be a very nice surprise in classic physique. I mean, these two photos, they are recent, yeah. In this photo right here, his lats are really looking amazing, and he looks overall fuller and bigger than he was before. That rib cage is also very good, the stomach looks very aesthetic. I mean, his calves and his forearms could be a little bit bigger. You know, and his arms as well, his triceps. But still, I mean, this torso, the lats and the chest and the vacuum, eh, half vacuum, and the shape of his abs really does look aesthetic, really does look classic. I cannot really say anything bad about this pose, he really looks good in it. I'm not a huge fan of his physique, but this time around, uh, the, with his most recent physique updates, I think I can say that he looks better, and maybe he will do better as far as placing at the Mr. Olympia. We also have a physique update of Henry Pierre Anno. I don't really have much to say about him. He was fourth last year. He really does look good. I mean, he has that X taper. Legs are also big, and uh, shoulders are wide. Lats are there. Waist is small. Not the stomach so much, his stomach is a little bit bloated, but the waist, structurally speaking, is small. His arms are very full and dominant, he has a great back. He is suited for open bodybuilding, I don't know what he's doing in classic, but if he can cut the weight, then sure, why not? But I think he should focus on open. We also have a physique update of another classic physique Olympian, Kirill Kundaliev. Uh, I hope I didn't butcher that name, he's Ukrainian. And he looks very good. I don't really have much to say about this guy, to be honest. I don't really know much about him. All I know is he will be at the Mr. Olympia. That he reminds me of Chris Bumstead. He looks bigger than Chris, fuller. But we'll see how he does. After we find out how did he do, we can make more comments on his physique. But as for now, he looks great. He looks big and full and vascular. And uh, ready to compete at the Mr. Olympia. Now, for the end of this video, you're going to have Ronnie Coleman. Another update, another training video. And uh, as you can see, he is training his shoulders, he doesn't stop with his workouts, and he wrote an interesting description in this video, so let me read this for you. We are exactly one week away from the Mr. Olympia. Been working on my conditioning lately. Now all I have to do is add about 3 to 4 inches on my arms and legs, and I'll be ready to step on the stage once again. Well, maybe 10 inches to my legs. Well, if I can do that by next Saturday, I will definitely be on stage competing. Something I think is impossible to do. Oh, well, it was a good thought for a minute there. That's probably as close as I'm gonna ever get to competing again. In the meantime, I'll just stick to trying to get in better shape. 
I will be at the Mr. Olympia Expo signing copies of my new book, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, Ronnie Coleman was talking about the comeback. And uh, he's qualified for life, of course, by winning one Mr. Olympia and he won eight of those. And uh, it wouldn't really be too crazy for me to <laughs> actually even see him competing one day. Because knowing his mindset, it wouldn't be too crazy. Oh, with this kind of body, he wouldn't do really good. He wouldn't do very well. But who knows what can happen in a couple of years. Kevin Lebroni did it. Many other guys came back. Maybe Hironi Coleman does it eventually, but probably not. Anyways, thought it was funny to read this to you. And if you guys enjoyed this entire video, please like it. If you want to see more videos like this, all kinds of bodybuilding updates and uploads and all kinds of bodybuilding stuff, you know what to do. Subscribe to my channel. Once again, thank you very much guys for watching. All the best. Bye-bye.